The first one is from Paul. Uh, Paul sent um, a longer email, which is all right, uh, but pretty much talking about how to organize your folder structure inside of Fusion 360 when you are imparting models. So what Paul does is Paul is using Inventor, and then right now he is exporting that Inventor file as an IGES file, what is a neutral format, um, so he can bring that into Fusion 360 to do his CAM uh, inside of there. Now, um, actually, Paul sent uh, kind of like he wants a folder structure uh, where he has, he does like clay extruders, and I don't know much about clay extruders, but he wants, you know, the, and this goes for most people, I think, you want kind of like a project folder with a project name, and then he wants some folders underneath it uh, for his inventor fi files, IPTs, for his IGES files, and then for his uh, Fusion CAM files. Now, Paul, I hope that uh, you're going to see that I'm going to make your life a lot easier <laughs> in, uh, in this example here. So let me show you how I would do this. So let me just switch over here. Um, now, we inside a Fusion 360 right now. I'm actually going to jump out of that um, because there is a much better way to deal with this, Paul. We can completely eliminate the whole fact of IGES files. We can bring in uh, Inventor files right here. If you click right here, you could actually just bring in your Inventor files, click your, your, your file and, and bring in, uh, in here you will see that you have the, the Inventor files. But it gets better than that. You can actually do something better. And I've talked about this in another live stream. I, have, <laughs> I haven't actually done it myself quite yet, but you can actually export all your files here over to a Fusion team. Now I do have Fusion team. What you need to do is you need to go out and you need to Google Fusion 360 blog post July 24th. There was a product update. In this one, Kiching talks about, um, in under the data, data management section, he talks about Fusion Team and how you guys all are now entitled to Fusion Team and you can get rid of your uh, individual accounts. I haven't done it myself yet. Primarily just because um, I've been a little bit lazy. Um, and, and But what you can do is you can get all your, your individual accounts over to a Fusion team. However, I do have Fusion team. Paul, I want to show you the best workflow to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to switch over to a Fusion team here I have called um, the Tech Marketing Sandbox. In here, there is actually a, a folder called Lars. And in here, there's a folder called... Uh, ask last live now that one is empty right now and I did this on purpose so hopefully most of you guys see kind of like the workflow now I'm gonna open up in my case here my um, my Windows Explorer um, you guys are all familiar with that now what you do with fusion team is you actually end up getting the same access inside of your fusion team in here so there you will see <clears throat> it's the same tech marketing sandbox I open that one up and that was the last folder, that's this one. And then there is a Ask Last Live in here, and there's nothing in here. Now, what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this one Paul. And as I do that, you will actually see that we are getting that things are happening inside of Fusion. So this is happening uh, live. So I'm gonna call this one Clay Model in there, right? Now, in here, in this folder, um, I could just click here and refresh. Let's just refresh. There is Paul's um, Paul's folder. Now in here, I'm going to create two folders for you, Paul. I'm going to create one that I'm going to call my Inventor Files, right? Uh, because you prefer to use Inventor, but it's fine. And I'm going to call one here. I'm going to call Fusion 360 Files, okay? So I think so far with me, you feel pretty comfortable. You're inside of kind of like your standard Windows folder structure and you're kind of creating what Paul talked about uh, in this regard, these different uh, file structures. Now, what I did was I actually fired up Inventor because that is what uh, Paul is using. And I modeled up two files. I haven't saved these files out yet. One is called part one. What was kind of like a, because one of the things that Paul is talking about is that he has part that both needs to be milled and need to be turned. So I also made kind of like a cylinder part uh, in here, okay? Now, I, one thing I just wanted to say quickly, Paul, make sure 
do you just have a single seat of inventor or do you actually have the design and manufacturing collection? Because if you have design and manufacturing collection, you actually do have CAM right in here, but it's the same CAM that is inside of Fusion 360. So you could actually save the whole Fusion 360 thing if, if you want to. So you got to check on that. But if you don't, now I have modeled up my, my parts inside of a vendor because Paul prefers a vendor. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to navigate to uh, my uh, my Fusion 360 team sitting right there. Tech marketing. We had on the Lars. We had an Ask Lars Live. And here's Paul's clay model. We just created that one. And in the inventor folder, I'm going to save this IPT as my model base, maybe. We call it that. And hit save to that. And uh, it gives me that I don't have an active project. What is fine. I'm just going to say yes to that. And um, in my part two folder here, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let's go to that um, Fusion team. And Lars and here, gray model inside that vendor file. Let them see we have the model base. We're going to call that one round just so we can kind of distinguish them out. Okay, this is all we need to do with uh, with Inventor. So let's just uh, hide that out. Now, if we go into inside of here in Windows Explorer, you will now see these files are sitting here. So this lets you navigate just like uh, you would. Um, how are you probably doing it right now, Paul, in your with your with your inventor models? We just saved them right out on, on Fusion Team. Now I'm going to hide this for a second. Let's double click on uh, Paul's folder here inside of Fusion, and there you have our two folder structures, and then open up the inventor mo model, and there are the two folders. Now, um, if we are going to use the CAM inside of Fusion 360, all we really have to do is double click and open up. Uh, these files inside of Fusion 360. Now, this is pretty neat right now because as we're opening up these files right now, Paul, we're actually not, we did not convert this inventor file into a Fusion 360 right now. This is one of the powers of inventor and Fusion 360 being in Autodesk is that we're using AnyCAD. So uh, this is actually, we're looking at your inventor file right now. But it's kind of just wild to me. But what we could do now is hit manufacture. We can set up our uh, work coordinate system here. Uh, so we get that and we can now apply. Uh, maybe we do a 2D adaptive on this. Uh, let's select the tool. I don't know what we're going to do here. Whatever, whatever fits, whatever fits in here. I'm not sure. There we go. Here's our tool path inside of Fusion 360. You can now go and post that out to your machine, right? Now, um, we applied the tool path to the Fusion 360 model, but um, we haven't saved the file yet. So now when I go and hit save, then now it is, when we're saving it, it is going to convert this file into a Fusion 360 file because it's going to contain all this tool path. So now we can just call this, maybe we call this our Fusion model base. And, um, and then we're just, instead of putting it in, in the inventor file, we're just going to go back here to Paul's clay model, double click on and bring it into the Fusion 360 file right there. And now that has been saved. So we are actually not altering your models. Now, what is really cool about this right now, Paul, is that if I actually go back into inventor, um, and I make changes to this inventor file, <laughs> it will actually update inside of this Fusion file um, in here, but not to um, our this file here, of course. That's now been saved out. We've broken kind of the link. But that's how I would do it. Now I have right out here in my, in my space, and you can see here if I go back into my downloads folder on my Windows machine, if I scroll down, I click on this uh, link here, you will now, and I go back into it, you will see that all this is kind of living uh, out on, I'm looking out on the cloud right now. So there's Paul's clay model. There's our two inventor files. And if I go back again, there's our Fusion 360 file with the tool pack. This here is absolutely, um, it's absolutely amazing. This is the best way by no doubt to do this. Um, Make sure you go out and read Kaching's blog post. Just Google Fusion 360 blog 
and uh, the, Ju the June, sorry, not July. Oh yeah, this is July. So it's June up here in the, <laughs> that's a mistake. July 24th, find this blog post and you can find all the information about doing that. Um, it is absolutely awesome. It's amazing. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, Paul, I hope that you found that useful. If you do, thumbs up. If you don't, if you're honest, thumbs down. And Paul or anybody else or anything to add to this, uh, put that in the comments there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would truly appreciate that. Uh, that would mean the, the world to me. But this whole fusion team and connecting this, kind of wish that this had been like this in the beginning uh, because fusion team gives you all different kinds of uh, different functionalities, including working directly with your, uh, with the stuff on your desktop, like Inventor. <laughs>